Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and Make Toys is entering the master style game of Masterpiece Alikes with their Re Colon Master Series. And the visualizers are the second release, first villains, and seventh numerical entry in the line. Analyzer, Rangefinder, and Monocular are a trio of physically similar spy brothers who stem from the Reflector family tree, going for an extremely G1 animation look in that they're all nigh identical purple and gray robots with green chests. The purple looks incredibly close to the darker hue that tended to show up in the cartoon, while the gray is a touch lighter and the green is translucent, revealing sculpted doodle bopper stuff underneath. Those greebles are the main creative liberties taken in the surface detailing, while the visualizer's gray foot panels are the biggest color liberty. Two of these guys have got purple backpacks, while Rangefinders is gray as well. Basically, they operate within the animation error boundaries of the old 80s cartoon to deliver three very obvious reflectors. By the way, while Rangefinder is clearly the most unique of the three, Analyzer is the truest reflector generic among the team. Monocular deviates slightly in having a camera lens turtle shelled onto his backpack. I wonder why! Analyzer and Monocular look borderline identical otherwise, though they do have some slightly different internal tooling that we'll see more clearly later on. Their head sculpt has a lot of proper details, like a purple mohawk and chiseled cheekbone lines, but the helmet part really could've used some more outward bulk. It makes the helmet come off looking a bit like a swim cap, to steal some language from the TFW discussion thread. The face is excellent though, and if you lever it out of there, you can replace it with one of three variant face sculpts that are included. There's a star screamy sneering face, a teeth gritted upset face, and a really teeth gritted really upset face that just doesn't want to go on a test run through the space bridge, please! The only downside I've had with these faces is that it's hard to get any of them to get out of the helmet without using a small flat tool as a lever. For weaponry, the visualizers have three unique handguns, based very much on the three weapons used by the original G1 Reflector toys. These use a predictable masterpiece-style palm tab, though the slot is located in the back of the palm rather than the side. And it's a good fit! The big separate camera flash can also be used as a handgun, albeit a gigantic and unwieldy one. Does it just shoot light and cause retinal damage? Sure! Or you can flip open the front and reveal a nine rack of hella missiles! I like how the underside of the flash lens is a cross-haired targeting display when it comes time to missile visualizer's foes. So these guys have, like, some shared qualities and some unique qualities, so let's get all that info out of the way right away. These two dudes, the ones who don't have shutter bellies, are basically identically posable. So, uh, we'll just cover one for now. He's got a ball-jointed neck with a proper amount of waggle, and he's like, just, you know, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, it was him! He's the one who did whatever you're accusing me of. His shoulders have got uh, a ball socket connection underneath the shoulder pad. The shoulder pad actually clips down onto the stem of the ball socket joint. It's real tight, uh, it's, you know, it's a big fat ball socket. Feels good, doesn't feel like it's grinding off its pressure or anything. Uh, and uh, I like it, there's a bicep swivel, which remains unimpeded by the shoulder pad no matter where you go. Uh, the elbow is double jointed, and it's kind of weird how it works. So, like, if you bend it 90, there's like a cut divot there that perfectly fits the sculpt of the forearm. But if you fold it past there, you can get a double jointed bend of a slightly deeper curl. So, uh, it's a bit tricky to use, but at least the potential is there. It's also a wrist swivel. Do it, do it! And then the fingers open, all masterpiece ish style. And they look okay when they're open. Uh, not like amazing, not terrible. There is a waist swivel right above the belly area, and then the hips are unimpeded by the skirts because the skirts just move with them when they go forward and backwards. And then uh, outward motion is a separate hinge, there's a thigh swivel, it's all non-ratcheted but real smooth and tight, feels good. The knee is ratcheted, and it can bend 90. Now there is a second joint in here, but it doesn't really do anything, and it actually makes the knee bend like a bit less than 90. So, uh, the two shutterless belly guys have only got a 90 degree bend on their knees but they do have a super deep ankle like it's really easy to leave this clipped in there you know so the foot's locked and it looks a bit more smooth but if you pop it out a click then yo look how deep that is it's amazing now what's different this guy has got the same head and the same arms it's, it's all identical he's also got a waist swivel but his is below his shutter belly so it's a bit lower set than this guy's functionally that means nothing his hips work the same as well that wasn't his hip. We'll talk about that in a second. His hips work the same as well. Um, I believe it, it's pretty much the exact same sculpt, yeah. Uh, there's a thigh swivel. 
Uh, his ankles don't bend quite as deep. Now, this guy, these two guys, their ankles bend about that deep. Uh, this dude, his ankle bends about that deep. So it's like a few degrees less. Barely noticeable, but worth bringing up because this guy has a massive advantage in that he's got double jointed knees that fully work and he can totally get some tiger knee action going on and the other two guys simply cannot. Their knees only bend 90 degrees, this guy's knee, uh, his knees bend all the way. So, generally when posing these guys, I think they look really cool. Uh, I, I find like their, their postures often end up looking quite natural, no matter what it is you have them doing, like if it's creeping around or just standing around and looking like they're, you know, trying to figure out who is not going to test the space bridge out today. Yeah, these dudes, like when they're, I don't know, doing a tree pose or anything. In general, I think they pose real natural. And uh, I just wish that the other two could have had his double jointed knees, but it's a small nitpick in my opinion. And as far as the ankle tilt thing, that's mathematical. I showed you for fun. If that's a real thing that's going to cause you real problems, then I... I don't know, man. What are you doing that needs that extra 10 degrees? Analyzer and Monocular transform nearly identically to form the outer chunks of the Visualizer Alt Mode, and feature a whole lot of panel flippage on their legs. This can be a bit overwhelming if you're going through the motions for the very first time, but everything has tab slot placement guidance, and the only truly tricky thing is the order in which they're all locked up. The backpack splits open to reveal the main unique tooling on the flat-bellied visualizers. They have got circular chunks of telephoto lens folded inside out within their bodies. This stuff is real tight on my copy of the set, and it is my understanding that it'll be tolerance tweaked a touch before full release to make transformation a bit less finger painful. These telephoto lens chunks will have a pretty cool payoff soon, but first we've got to continue on. Analyzer and Monocular lock together into fairly solid bricks of camera, thanks to their aforementioned bevy of guidance tabs and slots. In fact, the tabs are so secure that it's a little harder getting them undone going back to robot mode than it is getting them in place for this. Setting them aside, Rangefinder transforms quite differently in just about every major body quadrant to become the central alt mode section. His backpack and upper torso do a few spins to get all the viewfinder bits into the proper positions. The biggest surprise is that his faux belly shutter hides away and has nothing to do with the alt mode. The biggest bummer is that Rangefinder's arms and legs are just tricky enough to tab together that it may take a while for you to get the hang of it. I found that connecting each arm into each leg before connecting the central tabs makes for a much easier experience. Why did I film this connecting the central tabs first? I wasn't thinking, so I figured I'd illustrate my ignorance into something that was more illustrative of... I wasn't thinking! Anyway, it's time to unite the Spy Brothers, and they have multiple connections to make this part a breeze. The big badass payoff is that Analyzer and Monocular execute a final locking mechanism in forming the extended telephoto lens with their own built-in circular chunks. This keeps the camera together for sure, but it also means there is no parts forming necessary to get the three robots connected into the basic animation accurate reflector camera shape. And yo, this is a meaty chunk of retro photo gear. The color palette is, once again, fairly G1 accurate, though the color placement takes a few liberties here and there. I love the big, boxy, smooth shape of the thing, with the five most visible sides all covered up in alt mode detail. You only really see robot bits if you go for an upskirt angle, so don't, you sicko. I love the extra little touches, like the dial sculpt on one of the top side corners and the faux LCD display on the other. The viewfinder and main lens are both rendered in deep, translucent emerald green material that shines, baby. In hand, the camera mode feels like two proper palmfuls of old-timey gear. There are two spring-loaded shutter buttons on either side, and the three sections are held together pretty well. If you pull and twist at the visualizers, some of the connections may come loose, but the main telephoto lens interlock will prevent anyone from falling off right away, despite my best casual ham-fisting efforts. If you remove one of the shutter buttons, you can replace it with a slide mount piece, which can in turn attach the flash component to allow your conspicuous photo camera to shoot friggin' missiles incognito. I kinda like the slide mount gimmick, though it does sadly result in more spare parts than I might have preferred. But you can just leave it attached to the flash the whole time if you don't really care about realistic camera shoe mount action. 
There's one more black piece that can slide in underneath the camera. It covers rangefinder's legs, but more importantly, it gives the visualizers a legitimate screw mount to attach their camera mode to an actual tripod. This is really endearing and cool, entirely unnecessary, and put a huge smile on my face when I first learned of its inclusion. Now, that's a cherry on top kind of high-end accessory. The only downside is that it makes me wish for a weaponized mini tripod piece, kind of like the perfect effect reflector alikes. Finally, there's a smaller shrunken version of the visualizer camera, sculpted a little more G1-ish with its obvious reflector helmet buttons. It looks nice, but honestly, is a little too big. If it were rendered just a bit smaller, I think it'd look better in a masterpiece Decepticon's hands. Still, I guess you could just say that visualizers, like, full of big bloated alien Polaroid parts or cosmic lamography or something. The visualizers are a well-proportioned trio of playably posable robots who do the wonderful trick of being the only reflector alike on the market to not require parts forming for the alt mode's telephoto lens. This skyrockets their design value in my book. The robot mode proportions are also a delight, the color palette is spot on for reflector, and the additional faces, individual weapons, and friggin' real-life tripod adapter round out a nice high-end package. There are nits to pick if you decide to get fine tooth with your nitpick and comb, of course. I'd have really liked some kind of all-inclusive accessory storage for the camera mode, as the faces and handguns are left behind no matter what you do. The colors are generally correct, but there are some placements that don't match up perfectly with every frame of the G1 animation. Also, the helmets are pretty darn skinny, all things considered. Well, all things considered, that's probably partly to allow their heads to fit inside their alt mode cavities, but I can't say for sure because I didn't design the toys. As far as fitting in with a masterpiece display, Make Toys visualizers work out really well in my opinion. There's a generally fuzzy border in Masterpiece, mostly due to the nature of the physical materials being used, and the visualizers coast happily near the upper end of the haze. I'm quite impressed. All I'd really ask for are fatter helmets and rangefinders double-jointed knees on all three figures. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I hope this video has helped you visualize and reflect upon the seventh numerical entry in Make Toys Remaster line. I just wanted to specifically point that out again because, hey, it's pretty dang real to just throw numerical release order out the window as soon as you ship your second piece. Make Toys do as Make Toys do, man.